I swear, I'm not 40 years old playing with toys. Hey, what's up? Welcome back to Mediocre Painting with me. Today we're going to be working on a 3D printed cargo truck for use in sci-fi or modern war games. This was printed on a uh, FDM printer. That's one of the ones that feeds from a spool of PLA. So as you can see, like all FDM printers, it gets the lines in it. And unfortunately, there's no way around that with FDM printers. So that's gonna be your biggest obstacle when it comes to 3D printing, is getting good layer height and getting things that look good. So what we're gonna talk about real quick here is how to kind of clean one of these FDM printed models. And I don't know if you can see that too much on this camera, but there's like a lot of strings where basically the extruder has to stop and let go and start the next layer. So you get these little like nubs that stick out from the layers where the printing has stopped. And you can see on the underside here, you're gonna see all kinds of gap in the layer. And that's because this is printed with this down. So this is your flat side. This is actually on the plate here. So when it prints this, this actually hangs in space. So you get these weird separate looking layers in there. And uh, there's just a lot of cleanup that has to be done on these models. You can see like there's a little strings hanging off here. And uh, I'm using a 240 grit sandpaper, uh, sanding stick from God hand right here to kind of take a little bit of this edge off. <sighs> Some people I've heard, I haven't had the balls to try it yet. So you can burn a lot of these like hang downs and strings and points off with a lighter. We did that at the military academy to burn strings off a uniform when I had to wear a class A's. I haven't, uh, I haven't tried burning any strings off a of PLA yet. So if you guys have, leave a comment. Tell me how, what kind of luck you had. All right, I'm gonna go prime this guy. We'll be right back. So I primed this cargo truck with Games Workshop Chaos Black primer, and then I gave it a quick top-down coating of AK gray metal primer. So that way my shadows are still black on this vehicle, but I've got a top base coat of like a, a gray metal to work from so we can make this look like a cargo truck. Makes it a little bit easier, like the shading's already done for me in between the slats on the and the truck bed and stuff like that. So just a little cheating technique. It's like Xenophil, but not as cool. All right, I'm gonna fill up some of the spots where my primer missed in the under parts of this ladder here. So I'm gonna use uh, German Gray from Vallejo Model Color to fill that in. I like using German Gray because it is a nice faux black, but you can, you can actually still shade it. Just a nice dark gray for doing between these ladder rungs. Just filling in all those spots where I missed with the primer. This is on the underside, nobody's gonna see that. Trusty black metal from scale 75. I may do a little weathering on it to do, uh, to make it look a little bit more alive and not like it's like a toy truck just sitting on a board. Oh, I'm gonna dry brush a little bit of metal on this uh, dozer blade. enough to give it a little metallic sheen. Most dozer blades I've seen aren't shiny metal. Kind of worn, irony looking steel. All right, now to do the windshield, we're gonna do like a faux glass, but it's a sci-fi vehicle. So we're gonna do this a little bit cool. We're gonna use this turbo door cool ranch, mainly cause I think it's cool. There's the shaker ball. When you get flat surfaces like this on a 3D printed model, the levels and the print lines are really noticeable. That's just unfortunately par for the course for this kind of thing. But we can get our point across that this is supposed to be a, a window and it doesn't look bad. I'm gonna use some P3 coal black to do the windshield wiper blades. What's cool about models like this is you can put as much or as little detail, like we could highlight these tires on the edge here to make them look like they're uh, more rubbery as opposed to being black because this coal black is a really good uh, rubber color. I'm gonna paint these some of these boxes on the back, give them some color so they're not just gray. So we're gonna go with uh, APC interior light green. After a cleanup where I got out of the lines with my silver, with my metal ruler. I'm gonna use Mars orange for another box here. 
these headlights. I'm gonna stick the wheels on it now using some zap gap super glue. Be patient with your uh, with the PLA because sometimes it accepts the super glue really quick and sometimes it takes a minute to set up. And I'm pretty generous with this stuff because it does get brittle over time. I've heard that some PLAs will work with plastic glue because I mean it is kind of a plastic but I haven't had any luck finding one that works especially with the, the PLA that I use for printing. And now we're doing the dozer blade. Because why wouldn't a truck have a dozer blade in the 40th millennium? All right, now time for touching up and doing a little bit of weathering on this boy. Null oil. Liquid talent. And as always, the issue with doing any kind of washes on FDM printed miniatures is there's so many little miniature lines that the wash likes to just go in all of them. That's so why I'm kind of sparing with the wash on this. And the staining's okay because that can actually help in some locations for like giving the impression of weathering and depth. And once it's painted, they kind of disappear, but you definitely will notice them. Doing some faux window treatments here. This isn't normally what I would do, like if I was on, working on a windscreen, but these, this is just, you know, to give it the impression that it's, that it's actually glass. And then we'll gloss this once this is all over with. All right. So now that we've uh, sealed this with some spray on sealer, I'm going to get to a little bit of weathering just to make it look a little bit less like a toy and, and more like a model. You can do this for as much as you like. You don't even have to. It's just, I like weathering stuff and I'm going to use my neat AK products. So deal with it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm going to do some uh, oil on the wheels, like the wheel bearings on here. So for that, I'm gonna use this AK engine oil. Uh, it's gonna leave a glossy finish on the model to uh, make it look shiny like oil stains would, which is what I want. And as always, when you're messing with any uh, enamel paints, um, you wanna use a synthetic brush for this. Same with your washes and everything else, because they will mess up your real sable brushes. Learn this one the hard way. Don't be like me, kids. And if you get a little messy with your oil, who cares? It's oil. Sometimes that shit gets everywhere. I'm going to see how some of this engine oil looks on the smokestack. Like he's rolled coal too many times. I think that's what the rednecks call it when their diesel engines smoke. I'm not hip on the lingo, though. So we've done a little bit of oil. Now we're going to do some streaks. You can just kind of do whatever you want with it. Because we're just trying to show some wear. I don't have to worry about the rivet counters being like, oh, well, the oxidation of the rainfall in that area would not have made streaks of that color. So what I like to think of this as is like faux weather patterns or wear lines or whatever you want that just gives the model a little bit of a little bit more depth. So like I said, it doesn't look so much like a like a toy. That's why you matte coat your Gundam so it doesn't look so shiny. It's not a toy, it's a collectible figure. I swear, I'm not 40 years old playing with toys. All right, I'll show you a neat trick about these enamels that you can do to go in. And if you think you got a little too, too much going on, you can erase it or thin out to dilute the lines. Like if you got a little too bold with your streaks, you can actually just get a little bit of the thinner on your brush. So this way it's just kind of makes it a little more subtle. As long as you haven't sealed over top of it, you can reactivate those oils with a little bit of thinner. A little, muddy up those lines a little bit so they don't look so stark. And for our last step, in this journey, I'm gonna do some rust. Because what's a construction slash cargo vehicle without a little rust? Now, you can do another really cool rust effect using pigments. But I don't like to use dry pigment on models that are going to be handled. Even though dry pigment looks the best, in my opinion. Um, you can make a, a, a rust streak 
or a, a rust wash using dry pigment and thinner medium or glaze medium. Glaze medium works a little better because it's a little thicker. And uh, that works just as well. If you've got dry pigment and you don't have uh, an already mixed rust streak formula like this, that's another way you can make a wash. But this is real cheaty and real easy. So that's why I like it. Good old AK. Now you can make your rust effects and chip effects look way more effective by using chipping medium and actually like making some depth to these things, but I'm not gonna put that kind of time into this. There's no hard rules for it other than you should probably try to keep your, if you're trying to do streaks, keep your brush motions up and down. And just a little bit of weathering can really like give life, I guess, make it a little, a little bit more lively to an otherwise kind of flat kind of static model just that suggestion of wear and use that this is okay this is an actual thing that's in this world you know it has a story to tell good enough for a terrain piece i think sensei good enough would approve and one last thing i want to do is i'm going to gloss the the headlights and tail lights and put a little bit on the on the windscreen any gloss varnish will do. I just happen to have this uh, little bottle of Vallejo gloss varnish handy just to give the suggestion of lenses. And now we're done. If you guys want to see more content like this, let us know in the comments. If you want me to shut the <laughs> up, also let me know. Anyway, we'll see you next time. Love you guys. Bye.